Don't you hate it when your audio clips? It's probably one of the most annoying things for an audio person to hear. And thankfully, nowadays, I have a 32-bit float option in the Zoom F6. But for people who don't have that option, this could be helpful. And we're going to apply it in the Zoom F6, which is kind of redundant, but we'll get into it. Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, we're going to be talking about limiters with your audio signals within the Zoom F6, mainly. And then we're going to compare it to 32-bit float and limiters within your DAWs. So Premiere Pro, Studio One, those are the two options that I have. But before we get into it, let's talk about what is a limiter. And it's very easy to talk about because it's not that hard of a concept. A limiter is a threshold that you set to avoid clipping. There are two types, analog and digital. Analog basically is before it reaches the A to D converter in your recorder. After that, it goes to a point where it's digital and it's a little less accurate. And depending on the quality of your device will determine how good the limiter is. So simple enough. You make a threshold, so you negative two, negative three, negative four, whatever it is, you bring it down and it adjusts accordingly, attenuates accordingly, if the signal goes above that and you avoid clipping. Now, like I said, depending on the quality of the limiter will determine how accurate and how good that signal is. So since this is a Zoom F6 video, Let's talk about how we get there in the Zoom F6. And if you saw my high pass filter video, it's the same way to get there. Easy enough. So if you didn't watch that, or if you want a refresher, here you go. First, you're going to go to menu, then you're going to input PFL, then choose the input. Then you're going to go to high pass filter slash limiter, choose the limiter, and you got three options on normal, on advanced and off. The shortcut basically is take out those first two things and just press the check mark. That goes to your PFL settings and you follow along with the rest of the steps. Easy enough. Now, the question you probably are asking, what's the difference between normal and advanced? Well, here are some things that you need to know. In the normal settings, it applies to the output limiter as well. So your outputs, uh, your left and right and your line out, it applies to that as well. Sometimes the peaks remain, meaning that the peaks are inconsistent. So it hits hit or miss. It could get them, it might not. So it's less reliable. But in the normal, you also have the option for manipulating all the variables that could come into play. If you know a limiter, you know that there are a bunch of things that go into it. So first up, we have the knee, hard knee or soft knee. So hard knee means only peaks that exceed the threshold are attenuated. There is no effect below the threshold. Hard knee basically, here's your line and it only affects the things that are above it. That's it. A soft knee, the limiter gradually affects the signal about six decibels below the threshold for a gentler effect. So this is more of like a attack and release thing. So it's easing in and out, very similar to how a noise gate works and it kind of eases it in and out. So keep that in mind and it's something to play around with and it's not a one thing is relatable to all of it. It's not like all inclusive. It's just every situation requires a specific thing. Next up, you have your threshold. Basically adjust your threshold from negative 16 to negative two, easy enough. Then you have your attack and release, which are in milliseconds. Now, if you don't want to deal with some of that stuff, you could go to the advanced settings, which is kind of uh, a little annoying that they named it this way because the advanced settings, I guess it's more advanced because you got to do, it's more advanced technology, but it doesn't make any sense because usually advanced means it opens up more options. So it's just a little ridiculous, the wording on it, but that's the way it is. So in the advanced, you turn that on and you don't have access to type, threshold, attack, and release. You just have your target level which it's negative 16 to zero decibels. Easy enough, you just set the threshold and just like a normal limiter with just the threshold, 
do it that way. This is the old school way of doing it, and it does all the work. Now, in the advanced settings, you have more of a reliable uh, avoidance of clipping. It's it's a hard line, and that's it. It They say that it never does it. That all being said, with a 32-bit float file format, chances are you're probably not going to have to worry about clipping. And the limiter, I don't think, is available in 32-bit float strictly mode. You'll be fine. Set your levels normally, but know that it's going to be fine. It will be okay. Now, the last thing before we get into some tests, let's talk about some restrictions. The limiter cannot be set on in advanced if auto mix is on or the ambisonic format is on. So basically, if the auto mix is on and the ambisonic is on, you can't use it. It also can't be used in the 192 kilohertz in sample rate. So be careful with that if you're doing high end samples and things like that. When set to on advanced, the input latency is increased by one millisecond. So basically, if you're monitoring it, there's going to be one millisecond of latency because it's anticipating the signal. So keep that in mind if you're a person who's monitoring it, if you're an audio person. Chances are, if you're monitoring it, you probably don't need this, especially if you have the 32-bit float. Just be good with your audio levels. Stick to your fundamentals. And those are the restrictions that you're going to run into. Not many, and they're pretty self-explanatory, and they probably won't be too counterproductive but there are things to keep in mind when you're using it, especially if you're a person who's used to using 24-bit and you have certain things that you use, certain things are not available. But like I said, it's not really that game-changing. It's just, it's pretty common sense. So now we're gonna get into the booth and do some tests, do some loud tests and comparing and everything and just give you a bunch of examples and then afterwards I'm going to break it down in the software and then compare it to the actual uh, in onboard limiter. All right so we have the AT4040 here and I'm just going to do a quick uh, limiter test and I have the limiter on right now. I'm recording in 24-bit. There was a little bit of a peak there. I'm going to point out some peaks uh, as I go and of course I'm going to know in uh, post. But this is with the limiter on and at negative four. So check, 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 one, two, one, two, check, check, check. Let's turn it off and see how it reacts. And I'm not going to change anything else other than the limiter on and off. And it's on advanced, just so you know. If you remember, advanced had less options. It had just basically your threshold. So now it's off. And we're going to clip again. Check, 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 one, two. Check, 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 one, two. Check, check, check. There you go. There's a clipping there. And I'm doing that intentionally, obviously. It's much more hot than I would normally keep it. Uh, I would normally keep it, just for context. Check, 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 one, two. Check, 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 one, two. That's roughly between negative 12 and negative 6 at like 35 decibels. I was at like 42 before, so... There's your example and limiter on and limiter off in advance. Now let's do the just a quick test with the the other one, the normal version. All right, so now we're on normal. Threshold is at negative two. Attack is at one millisecond and release is at two hundred milliseconds. And we got a hard knee. So here's your hard knee example. And let's get that gain a little higher so we could get some examples. Go back up to 42. Check, 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 one, two. Check, 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 one, two. Mike, check, check, check. One, two. Check, 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 one, two. Check, check, check. So your burst of air, big ones, and uh, occasionally when you're talking like this, especially if you get a little closer and uh, you start going a little more uh, up in the distance, you know, the whole thing trying to get that proximity effect it's starting to cut out a bit it misses you could hear it check 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 one two check 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 one two mic check 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 one two and you're going to notice that it's a it's a little more uh i think it's more clean at least it sounds like that right now uh i will let you know in post if i noticed anything specific so the next thing i'm going to do obviously you can mess around with the milliseconds to attack and release but 
that's this is just for context and I don't want to make the video too long if you're interested in something like that and if you're interested in um, a follow-up video on just strictly limiters and things like that not based on the Zoom F6 just based on just having tests let me know microphones you want me to test with it and different examples whatever you want and if enough people do it it will happen sooner rather than later that's how this channel works okay so one more test just for variety's sake this is the pd70 and i'm gonna do a bit of a limiter check on it obviously this has uh no switches no nothing on and no post processing just cranked up so i got this thing cranked up to about 61 decibels and talking right now i'm i'm actually at a decent level i'm actually at a good level but obviously i'm not really close to it i mean i'm close but i'm not like eating the mic as a lot of people portray using a, a dynamic microphone as eating it which it's accurate in a lot of senses but in this case so the limiter is off so let's see what it is check 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 one two check 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 one two mic check 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 one two check 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 one two mic check 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 and that was clipping uh you you notice uh on the zoom f6 level uh instead of when it shows peaking with the limiter on it turns yellow on the top there so just so you know for context and let's do the other one soft knee first negative two decibels Check, 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 one, two. Check, 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 one, two. Mike, check, check, check. So, check, 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 one, two. Check, 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 one, two. Mike, check, check, check. So, there's your test with the limiter. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, do some post processing, comparing it to the limiter on here to a limiter in Premiere Pro. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. Not going to go into Studio One if you're interested in that. Uh, I plan on doing something with that but in a separate video. I plan on doing more audio-related as opposed to hardware-related uh, videos and just giving my impressions and my uh, just opinions on it, uh, just giving you some examples of certain things. And if you have any suggestions on limiters, high-pass filters, I put out that video as well. Let me know down in the comments, and I can throw it on the list, and if enough people want it, I will do it sooner rather than later. Check, 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 one, two, check, 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 one, two, mic, check, check, check. Check, 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 one, two, check, 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 one, two, check, check, check. All right, so I listened to everything. I wrote down some notes, and my impressions are pretty much the same for the AT4040 and the PD70. There are little things here and there that I could nitpick, but I'm going to keep it simple for you, and I have some notes for you right here. So the limiter on advanced is good, and with minimal crackles, meaning that the 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 missing is not really there. It doesn't really miss that much. I think you heard it occasionally, but it, it's pretty good. And for having less work and just having a threshold, it's really nice to have. You might lose some flexibility and variety in which you can use certain things like the attack, the release, and all that stuff, the hard knee or the soft knee. But I do feel that it's definitely a better option for someone who just wants to have a limiter. That's it. But I will say this a lot, if you have a 32-bit float file format in the F6, it's kind of questioning why you use the limiter in the first place. Unless you strictly use 24-bit, in which case it is very useful. This is for those types of people who just want to use 24, which is fine. Now on to the normal hard knee take. I noticed that it was clean for the most part, but when you start getting up on it and using it in close proximity, especially with that 4040, you notice some some misses and some crackles there and it kind of cuts out a little bit maybe it was just me let me know what you think down in the comments on that because i definitely heard something off and then finally the soft knee was pretty clean so the descriptions in the manual are pretty accurate maybe a little vague but for the most part they do give a good representation of what you're getting into with this limiter but this will be the last time I say this in this video with a 32-bit file format you have less to worry about and I know people are pretty like uh, I don't know they, they kind of just give 32-bit float a hard time because it's like oh is it cheating or is it too good to be true I, to, I've used it a ton 
I used it a lot. I used it on client work. I used it on short films. I never had a problem. I, the only problems, as I said in one video, I don't know if it was this one. It might have been another one, were user error, meaning me, my problem, and my mistake. So 32-bit float on its own has never given me an issue. I'm not saying that it gives no one an issue. I'm saying that for me and my own personal experience, it has not given me an issue. So that's my take on it. And that all being said, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please hit the like button down below. It would be greatly appreciated. It helps this video, helps this channel get out to more people, learn about audio, learn about the F6. And I really do think I'm the F6 guy on YouTube. Just claiming it right here. Maybe someone will come for the title one day, but I doubt it because... I don't see many people covering the F6. Maybe Chris. Chris might take my title. Chris, you ain't taking this title. Chris, you know who you are. All right. Comments. Let's have a discussion. Let's have a conversation. I don't want to have arguments. I don't want to have anybody just like saying I'm stupid or something like that. No. I just want to have a nice discussion. And if you disagree, let's have that discussion. Let's learn from each other. Maybe I can learn something. I probably will learn something. I don't know everything. So, like I said, constructive, be nice, that's all. And if you like my vibe around here, please consider subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. We're building a really cool community in the YouTube community. And the Discord is in its infancy. But if you want to join that and have a discussion with other people as well, rules still apply there. And just... Have a good time. That's all. And that's all I got for you. Until next time, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Stronghold. Stronghold. Your will never be the same after you've been in the stronghold.